I'm back. So I know there's been a couple of like really theory heavy videos that we've done, um, but I think they're all kind of out of the way. Uh, now we're going to start getting into some really, really fun stuff, which is just playing. Um, this video is for the guitarists out there and the uh, first mindset that I was mentioning, which is the practice people. Uh, if your goal is I don't want to get into crazy looping, but I want to use the looper to help me out, like help me get better at like improvising, help me get better at like ideas and things like that. Um, this is for you. So typically when we're going into looping, uh, obviously we're going to do it from the context of having only one track available. Um, this is how I used to loop for a very long time. Uh, what I would do is I would just record the chord progression that I was playing over and then I would be able to do guitar solos over it. So if I was at a gig, um, I could record a loop of whatever I was singing over, um, like the chord progression, and then I could just jump in and just shred. And so that would definitely give me like two or three minutes of no singing because when I was early in my gigging career, I only knew like 10 songs and I was like, oh, I've got to play a three-hour show. How am I going to do that? Well, y'all are getting heaps of guitar solos. So here you go. So what you're going to do is whenever you're doing the guitar solo stuff or you're trying to accompany yourself, you just need to get the, the chords in time uh, and don't be too fancy with it. Like keep it really simple. You don't need to do crazy things. You don't need to stack heaps of layers. You don't need to do anything like that. Just play the chords that you want to play uh, and just get it in time. So it'll be a really good uh, exercise in playing in time. So one example of like, I could just say, like say I was playing a song like, so how does, how does it go? So let's stretch it down at dirty laundry. No chance. I can't remember the key. So I'd play that, right? And then I would want to do like the jam would be over. So my phrase is bum bum bum. Bum bum bum. And then I just go mm, bum bum bum. Two, three, go! So you see how I got it in time? I don't strum that A chord when I come back to it. So now I've got my phrase and I'm like, all right. And then I just do whatever I wanted. Um, this is really, really handy. Say I was like, going to do like a practice over A minor. Really simple. And then I come on my solos. And that is really it. So the ver those, not the last module, but the one before it, like once you nail the timing, which is the hardest thing to do at the beginning, like it's the highest, um, the, the, the biggest return on time that you will put into looping, which is just learning how to do the first loop. Uh, once you can get that, you're good. Now, if you're playing guitar at home, uh, or you're doing anything like that, that's it. That's as far as it needs to go. Do not push yourself further than that. Learn to see what like kind of loops you want to fit in there. And then if we want to get, if you want to get into multi-layer looping, just keep going through the course because that's what the next stuff is going to be. But for if you're a guitarist at home or you're an instrumentalist at home, that's as simple as it needs to be. Just lay down the loop, finish it, and then do whatever you want. Attack with your heart's desire and uh, have heaps of fun. And like, that's all I used to do for my guitar practice was just, um, I would do my exercises. I don't recommend you do what I did. But um, one thing that was really, really instrumental in my playing was 
I would just sit and improvise. So I would just lay down a loop and then I would just shred. And I would just have heaps of fun soloing. Um, so I just lay down a simple 15 second, 20 second chord progression. And then I would just walk because my, my loop pedal at the time only had a limit of like 35, 37 seconds or something. It was like that. The Boss GT10. Um, it was an effects pedal which had a looper in it. So it was like so frustrating. Um, Little Wing uh, was the most frustrating one to learn how to loop. But that's pretty much it. Uh, you would just lay down the chords, improvise, have fun, um, use it to help you out. Uh, if you're someone who actually, this is more like a, uh, like a pain thing, but say you're a performer and you're gigging, uh, you can do this to help mitigate, uh, damage to your hands. Uh, sometimes if I have to do 12 hours in one day, um, I will definitely be layering loops and I will not be playing the guitar. So I'll just like rest my hand on my guitar and I just won't play anything. Um, I'll just lay it at the beginning. It gives my hand a good rest and then allows me to do the marathon of like 12, 12 hours of gigging. Um, so I don't recommend that. That's a really stupid thing to do. But if you need money and you're a professional and that's what you do, that's your life, uh, your livelihood, uh, you have to find ways to make it work and a loop pedal will save you so much. Um, the amount of friends and musicians that I've, that I've, um, I've like encouraged to be like, hey, you need to get into the looping. It is going to change your whole gigging approach. It's going to save you on your on pain in your back, pain in your hands. Like, because a lot of people don't really talk about a lot of that health stuff that that comes with uh, performing and playing a lot. Um, but you can really hurt yourself. Like, really, really hurt yourself. You can hurt your neck. You can like of holding the tension in your shoulders. Things it it can really affect you. Uh, so if you can be comfortable with just making chord progressions, it will greatly influence how you can move forward and you can sustain a really healthy relationship with your instrument and performing and practicing and being able to do things for a way longer. And, and you can, and then from there, because you can do it longer, you build up like this endurance that's, that will then even further enhance, uh, uh, your strength and ability to play longer. But yeah, that's all I was going to talk about for guitarists. So hopefully that helps you guys when it comes to looping. But play the chord progression, play it in time, and then have fun. And that's as far as you need to get with looping. Uh, if you're really comfortable with that and that's all you want to do, that's it. No one's going to be mad at you um, because you're being creative and you're having heaps of fun. So do not feel like you need to take any step further. But if you do, jump into the next videos and uh, we shall have a lot of fun. Let's go.